Patty, I'm here today along the White River with Dr. Monica Bohm of the Indianapolis Zoo's Global Center for Species Survival. And we are going to talk about some very important information about monarch butterflies. And I would say that maybe the first thing we need to do is express some clarity about what endangered means when we're talking about monarchs. What happened recently to the migratory monarch is that the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature, has officially listed the migratory monarch as endangered on its, on its red list. Um, and what that means is that um, we've seen considerable declines in, the, in this subspecies of butterfly over the past 10 years um, based on the, the kind of information that we gathered from the wintering grounds that are down in, in California and in Mexico. So that people understand there is a difference between a migratory monarch that we hear about that is flying off to the warmer climates in the winter than maybe other monarchs. Yes, yeah. So butterflies are often quite complicated because um, when, uh, when people study um, butterflies, they quite often refer to subspecies or species. So the monarch at the species level is actually being assessed as least concern on the red list. Um, that's because at the species level, the monarch ranges really um, well across North America, but then also into Central America, for example, and potentially even further, further down south. So it's got a pretty wide range and it's not really um, declining very rapidly. Um, but the migratory monarch is classed as a subspecies of the monarch butterfly. And this particular subspecies is the one that was assessed as endangered for the IUCN red list. Okay, so in the grand scheme of things though, they enjoy the same habitat, correct? Oh yeah, absolutely. All, all monarchs, um, all of these milkweed butterflies feed on milkweed. So that's, that's their host plant. So that's the whole group of, of, of species that the monarch and also then the subspecies, the migratory monarch belong to, they're milkweed butterflies. So if folks in Indiana and the Midwest wanted to uh, create habitats that support all the monarchs, what are some of the things that they could have in that habitat? Again, the most, the most obvious thing to plant is milkweed. So any of the native milkweeds from, from Indiana are, are the perfect food source for the larval stage of the, of the monarch butterfly. So when it arrives here, for example, on its migration, um, it can, it can um, lay its eggs on the, on the milkweed and then the larvae will feed on that and get nice and healthy and then eventually turn into butterflies. Right, and if people wanted to get even closer, there's, there are groups that will help you learn how to tag them in case they are the migratory type that fly south for uh, the warmer weather there, like Monarch Watch, for instance, and those, those are fun. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So I only recently moved to the US and to mm -hmm. Indiana and I'm looking forward to my first ever monarch tagging event because I'm kind of new to all of this. And um, I'm already really excited because the monarch is such a big deal over here in the US, right? But for example, right here where we are, um, the Indiana Wildlife Federation holds an annual um, monarch tagging event at the end of September, for example, mm -hmm. that people can sign up to and get really close to the species and, and help out a little bit with the monitoring that's done for this migratory butterfly. Which would be helpful for everyone. Thank you so much for this insight. It really helps people understand a lot about something that we all love and is very beautiful. I appreciate it. It is beautiful. Thank you so much. No very problem. Good. Very good. Patty, I'm the Weekend Gardener for Great Day TV with Patty Spittler.